Hello and welcome to the Investec Minds podcast, where we will be speaking to a number of leading experts over here at Investec. This is episode two. My name is Fifi Peters. Happy to be with you as always. And we'll be tackling the topic of grey listing today. You will recall that it has been over a year since South Africa was placed on the grey list by the Financial Action Task Force. This is a list that countries go who have weak controls when it does come to money laundering and terrorist financing. So to help us understand what the impact has been on the country, the economy in the past year, I'm joined by Happy Shihao. She's the head of compliance over at Investec Corporate and Institutional Banking. Happy, good to have you with us today. Thank you so much for having me. Grey listing is a topic uh, that's become a buzzword for many. Yeah, uh, I think we've seen a lot of regulatory developments and changes off the back of us being grey listed. Now, National Treasury has just uh, issued its latest efforts to try and combat um, money laundering and illicit financial flows in South Africa. Uh, we heard about a circular uh, just saying that certain transactions, what, 24,999 <laughs> <Nine. laughs> uh, should be reported to uh, the Financial Intelligence Center. This is transactions that are uh, come from abroad, of course. Just your initial thoughts on uh, the proposal and how impactful you reckon it could be. This uh, change or proposed amendment is is absolutely in line with the action items um, that National Treasury are driving around closing some of the deficiencies that were picked up uh, by the FATF uh, as part of the recommendations that they were testing um, and off the back of the mutual evaluation reports. Currently, we live with the suspicious uh, transaction reporting in terms of the FIC Act. Uh, so it's nothing really new for us. What it just does is now it widens the net and the scope for cash transactions at ports to now be reportable. We have seen actually government being proactive in trying to get us off the list. Businesses like yourselves also making sure the tie to scrutiny um, is being upheld. So we're told that it's around, uh, what, five uh, outstanding boxes that we still have to check out, five out of 20, which is not too bad in terms of getting off the grey list. So just help us understand where we are exactly in your view and what more needs to be done. Initially, where we started, uh, we were uh, lacking on 20 of the 40. So that was quite chunky. Um, I think National Treasury has really outdone itself in terms of trying to close off as much as what they have. So um, of the 15 of the 20 have been re-rated mm -hmm. uh, by the FATF, one of which has actually fallen away as non-applicable. The other 14, we are by and large, largely compliant or compliant. The five shortcomings is more around um, NGOs and our NPOs, you know, non-profit organizations. NPOs were never necessarily always looked at as high risk mm -hmm. uh, as a sector, uh, but, you know, when one looks at the, the quantities and the, and, the, and the flows of funds mm -hmm. uh, from donors, um, et cetera, it should be in a sector that, that we kept a closer watch on. Mm -hmm. Customer due diligence, around knowing your customer. Uh, I know there's a couple of pain points as a consumer, you know, when you try to get some banking services, they want your ID, they want, uh, you know, maybe uh, some some blood of yours to make sure, sure that it's you, <laughs> just to test the loan of the DNA, all of it, all of it, Finger all of it. Fingernail tip. <laughs> 100%, which is quite frustrating sure. from, a, from a client servicing perspective. But what that does is it empowers the financial institutions to know their clients. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, the requirement is that understand who is coming into your business and who you are providing financial services to. We need to understand those flow of funds. We need to verify uh, where the funds are flowing. So one of the big changes is around beneficial ownership. Um, and it's really to find a warm body. Who is the warm body behind mm -hmm. certain opaque structures, uh, entities? So, so there's a lot of that, and that takes time. Uh, it's a lot of effort, uh, not just on private sector, but also on the regulators around the data and the, the intelligence that they can then extract out of that. Mm -hmm. um, cash couriers, um, there's a lot of virtual and fiat currencies that are flying around. Um, we don't necessarily have a good handle on that. I think we're a little bit behind in terms of legislating uh, on the likes of fiat currency and crypto. I think we've been very reactive um, as a country around having any type of oversight um, and monitoring and supervision in that space. Mm. These are, I mean, some of the challenges um, that our, our, our government agencies need to tackle um, For sure. to, to make sure that we, we can comply 
apply and fully come off the grey listing before the three-year period um, that we've been provided. Essentially um, a collective responsibility, 100%. as you said it. But Happy, thanks so much for your time, making us a lot more wiser when it comes to issues around grey listing and what has been done and what is being done and what still needs to be done. It's only been a pleasure and thank you so much.